we have got one episode to talk about today. It's serious, it's heartfelt, it's real, and I'm almost afraid to talk about it. First, before we dive into it, I want to wish you a happy new year. But what's uncanny about this episode is that it's timely, I think. For you may have just come across the holidays with your family and have come to learn that you may have been ostracized by some of your family and then extended family. Today, we're going to talk about this. The title of this episode is Ostracized, How Your Narcissistic Family's Love Turns Into Hate After Going No Contact. Pull up a chair, get some tea, and let's dive in. Inside narcissistic families lies enough dysfunction that Hollywood movies would be able to write dramas on it for years to come. Oh, wait, they already do this. In this episode today, we're going to talk about what happens after you, the scapegoat, stand up for yourself within the realm of a narcissistic extended family, have gone no contact with one or more individuals, and then have come to find out the rest of the family has ostracized you. What the heck happened? Let's break down the multiple layers of dysfunction going on behind the scenes in layers, causing one confusing mess for those involved. The dysfunction is deliberate. It's carefully crafted and it's orchestrated by those who wish to cause you harm. Yes, even hatred from family. Is blood thicker than water? Whoever said blood was thicker than water probably was motivated by guilt to say such a thing and to keep their family intact. They saw or were beginning to see the layers of deep dysfunction and somebody in the family, the narcissistic ringleader perhaps, needed and wanted to keep the family intact. This saying was passed down by generations to keep the guilt alive since it's such a powerful motivator and of course keep families together, albeit wide scale dysfunction. It has also been stated that blood is indeed not thicker than water, not in a literal sense, but in the truth and the reality that your family may be one of the largest causes of emotional pain and mistreatment. Your actual family may have been your first bully or the ones that caused such emotional destruction it started early and unfortunately became normalized. No contact was not always an option. In spite of the generational trauma, and familial dysfunction. No contact with a family member was not always an option. Sure, it was thought about, but due to financial or survival needs, the practice of actually going no contact within a family was not as popular as it is today. Not only that, but the unbelievable force from the covert tactics perpetuated a mindset to comply and to play your role and unfortunately be silenced as an only option. Thankfully, choice is on the table for scapegoats now. Once the scapegoat sees their role in the family, understands it, and chooses to, quote, take action, for instance, they go no contact or they gray rock, then the immediate family and extended family goes through a shift to realign. The rest of the family shifts into survival mode. They don't want to be treated like the scapegoat, They want to be included in the family, still, perhaps for financial or for other reasons, and they will tolerate their role. The scapegoat was tolerated before, but now they are hated, and hated sometimes with a fury and a passion that is unleashed covertly or overtly on them by all extended family members. The scapegoat pays the price for seeing the dysfunction and trying to escape it. So now the scapegoat is now the most unpopular member of the family. If any family member tries to reach out and befriend or even maintain a relationship with the scapegoat, they will be hated also, unless they are serving a purpose of a flying monkey for a short time. The flying monkey is only after information from the scapegoat. They will act like they care and are interested in friendship with the scapegoat, but they are only after information 
which will be used against the scapegoat in the future. The flying monkeys have loyalty to the master general and ringleader, the narcissist. The scapegoat will be alone and is set up to fail. Yes, by family. This is the horrid truth, which is hard to grasp at times. The immediate family and now extended family hate the scapegoat. But how did it get like this? How were extended family taught to hate the scapegoat? How can this be? There are a variety of tactics narcissists use. Take a deeper dive in Master Manipulators, Discover Covert Tactics Narcissists Use to Manipulate, Deceive, and Control. Within narcissistic dysfunctional families is a large yet hidden element of control. There are no family meetings to discuss how to improve control. It's all done with a secret hidden agenda to overtake without notice or warning. There is a language and a secret method of communication within narcissistic families, in that compliance to a secret mission is the only acceptable action. If someone were to deviate from the unannounced plan, they are faced with consequences like silence, mistreatment, being ignored, ostracized, gossiped about, and these consequences are denied and never surfaced, but keep members of the family in compliance. This is why it's so hard to detect. It's secretive. If found out, actions are denied over and over again. You see, it's a game to a narcissist. If you are involved in a narcissistic family, the family dynamics are not only about inner control to keep the family looking like a shiny star on the outside, which is perception and reputation, but on the inside, it's a game. It's a game for the ringleader narcissist to keep all the pawns doing their job, and to perpetuate madness from within. They find the game humorous, but to those who escape and see this game, it's a matter of life and death, and definitely not a joke. The narcissist sees it as humorous because they can't believe others fall for it over and over again. Think Lucy from Charlie Brown. They laugh at how much control they have, and they love the chaos they create and the narcissistic supply from the family drama they have created. When the scapegoat sees the role they had in the family unit, the tactics slowly start to reveal themselves, although it can take years to see these tactics. One of these tactics is the narcissist's use of triangulation. The narcissist will deliberately create arguments between members of a family unit so they will be against each other for something real or made up. They will spread gossip, which are lies, with the intent to shape someone's perception so they will act in a certain way. They will twist and use someone's words against them. Triangulation causes disunity. It creates lack of trust. Relational bonding between these individuals is out of the question. Plus, there's confusion, and what's uncanny is the narcissist is not seen as the root cause of triangulation. They are removed, and the focus is on the he said, she said, and in defense control. It's maddening and cyclical, meaning it will happen over and over again with different players and different circumstances, but the same tactic. Why is the scapegoat ostracized? The scapegoat is definitely ostracized by their own family. When a scapegoat sees their role within the family unit and sees the tactics, this is the greatest fear of the narcissist. It's like now the scapegoated person has a very contagious disease. The narcissist fears that the scapegoat will open up and share their story, will teach other family members about the tactics, that they'll take action and that they'll make new healthy lifestyle choices that will turn the tables and leave the family unit entirely. The narcissist doesn't want any of this. The narcissist does not want to be exposed. They do not want others to learn of the tactics which have been going on behind the scenes for years and decades. They do not want others to see the manipulation tactics or that they were used as a pawn. The narcissist wants their crazy, dysfunctional world to continue 
because it provided them with supply, value, worth, merit. It was their life game, which they enjoyed so much at the expense of others. The narcissist fears losing control. They don't want to be found out. They want to maintain their reputation, and they must be perceived in a way they want by others, which they have built. They don't care. Their whole reputation is built on lies and gaslighting. The scapegoat now has the power to, quote, destroy the reputation of the narcissist and to shed light to others in the family who will listen, which is not common. This is why the scapegoat is ostracized. The narcissist would rather have the extended family cut ties than to be around the scapegoat. Two, it's to punish the scapegoat for trying to create their own life. If you are the scapegoat, you may have tried to establish no contact with one or more individuals within your family. You, however, didn't anticipate being ostracized by the whole family. Well, you had no choice. The more the narcissist uses these tactics, it has a compounding effect. You're being defamed within your own family. Slowly, the narcissist deteriorates your reputation. They spread lies and they make up stories with convincing detail that other family members just believe them. But it's not that others inherently trust the narcissist. It's that they have been manipulated and conditioned by them for years, some without knowing, that they trust the charisma and perception of the narcissist and choose to go along with it. Two, the risk of not going along with a narcissist is so great they cannot take this on. This is how love turns to hate by the very people who have outwardly proclaimed they love you for decades. It wasn't love. It was an agreement you had that as long as you obey, they will act as if they love you. If you take part in a mission that is not acceptable or that doesn't go along with the family status quo, then you will not be shown love but what you are shown is hatred. Has this episode been helpful? Have you gone no contact and then been ostracized by extended family? Remember to follow us on our social media channels to stay connected. If you've enjoyed this episode, drop a review on one of the podcast platforms that you're listening to on, which will help get the word out for us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Again, happy new year, and I'll see you in the next one.